15 sonnets of Petrarch. Selected and translated by Thomas Wentworth Higginson, published by Houghton Mifflin Company, Boston, in New York, MCA. Copyright 1903 by Thomas Wentworth Higginson, all rights reserved. Introduction This introduction is based essentially upon a paper, Sunshine and Petrarch, which originally included most of the sonnets in this volume. It was written at Newport, I, where the translator was then reciting. Introduction Near my summer home there is a little cup or landing by the bay, where nothing larger than a boat can ever enter. I sit above it now, upon the steep bank, knee-deep in buttercups, and amid grass so lush and green that it seems to ripple and flow instead of waving. Below lies a tiny beach, strewn with a few bits of driftwood and some purple shells, and so sheltered by projecting walls that its wavelets plash but lightly. A little farther out the sea breaks more rawly over submerged rocks, and the waves lift themselves, before breaking, in an indescribable way, as if each gave a glimpse through a translucent window. Beyond which all of seen's depths might be clearly seen, could one but hit the proper angle of vision. On the right side of my retreat a high wall limits the view, while close upon the left the crumbling parapet of Fort Green stands out into the foreground. Its verdant scarp so relieved against the blue water that each inward-bound schooner seems to sail into a cave of grass. In the middle distance is a white lighthouse, and beyond lie the round tower of old Fort Lewis, and the soft low walls of Connecticut. Behind me an oriole chirrups and triumph amid the birch trees which wave around the house of the haunted window before me a kingfisher pauses and waits, and a darting blackbird shows the scarlet on his wings. Sloops and schooners constantly come and go careening in the wind, their white sails taking, if remote enough, a baggy blue mantle from the delicate air. Sailboats glide in the distance, each a mere white wing of canvas, or coming nearer, and glancing suddenly into the cuff, are put as suddenly on the other tack and almost in an instant seem far away. There is today such a live sparkle on the water, such a luminous freshness on the grass, that it seems, as is often the case in early June, as if all history were a dream, and the whole earth were but the creation of a summer's day. If Petrarch still knows and feels the consummate beauty of these earthly things, it may seem to him some repayment for the sorrows of a lifetime that one reader, after all this lapse of years, should choose his sonnets to match this grass, these blossoms, and the soft laps of these blue waves. Yet any longer or more continuous poem would be out of place today. I fancy that this narrow cove prescribes the proper limits of a sonnet and when I count the lines of ripple within under projecting wall, there proves to be room for just fourteen. Nature meets our whims with such little fitnesses. The words which build these delicate structures of Petrarch are as soft and fine and close textured as the sands upon this tinny beach, and their monotone, if such it be, is the monotone of the neighboring Ocean. Is it not possible, by bringing such a book into the open air, to separate it from the grimness of commentators, and bring it back to life and light in Italy? The beautiful earth is the same as when this poetry and passion were new there is the same sunlight, the same blue water and green grass in her pleasure about might be her, for aught we know. The friends and lovers of five centuries ago Petrarch and Lara might be there, with Boccaccio and Fiametta as comrades, and with Chaucer as their stranger guest. It bears, at any rate, if I know its voigers, eyes as lustrous, voices as sweet. With the world thus young, beauty eternal, fancy free, why should these delicious Italian pages exist but to be nurtured into grammatical examples? Is there no reward to be imagined for a delightful book that can match Browning's fantastic burial of a tedious one? When it has sufficiently basked in sunshine, and been cooled in pure salt air, when it has bathed in heaped clover, and been scented page by page, with melilot, cannot its beauty once more blossom? and its buried loves revive. Emboldened by such influences, at least let me translate a sonnet light if I ray Phyllis, and see if anything is left after the sweet Italian syllables are gone. Before this continent was discovered, before English literature existed, when Chaucer was a child these words were written. Yet they are today as fresh and perfect as these laburnum blossoms that droop above my head. And as the variable and uncertain air comes freighted with clover scent from yonder field, so floats through these long centuries a breath of fragrance, the memory of Lara. Go the compared translators to carriers, who can be good wine to market, though it gets unaccountably water by the way. The more one praises a poem, the more absurd becomes one's position, perhaps, in trying to translate it. If it is so admirable, is the natural inquiry, why not let it alone? It is a doubtful blessing to the human race, that the instinct of translation still prevails, stronger than reason and after one has once yielded to it.
Then each untranslated favorite is like the trees round a backwoodsman's clearing, each of which stands, a silent defiance, until he has cut it down. Let us try the axe again. This is Talera singing Quando Amor. As I look across the bay, there is seen resting over all the hills, and even upon every distant sail, an enchanted veil of palace blue, that seems woven out of the very souls of happy days. A bridal veil, with which the sunshine weds this soft landscape in summer. Such and so indescribable is the atmospheric foam that hangs over these poems of Petrarch. There is a delicate haze about the words that vanishes when you touch them, and rip yours as you recede. How it clings, for instance, round the sun at Arachicolchium. Consider also the pure and reverential tenderness of one like this, Gualdana Tend. A companion sonnet, on the other hand, of Passus Barca, seems rather to be of the Shakespearean type. The successive races set sail one by one, like a yacht squadron, each spreads its graceful wings and glides away. It is hard to handle this white canvas without soiling. MacGregor, in the only version of this sonnet which I have seen, abandons all attempt at rhyme but to follow the strict order of the original in this respect is a part of the pleasant problem which one cannot bear to forego. And there seems a kind of deity who presides over this union of languages, and who sometimes silently lays the words in order, after all one's poor hemps have failed. Yonder flies a kingfisher and pauses, fluttering like a butterfly in the air, then dies tower of fish, and, failing, perches on the projecting wall. Doves from neighboring dovecots alight on the parapet of the fort, fearless of the quiet cattle who find their breezy pasture. These doves, in taking flight, do not rise from the ground at one side, hiding themselves closer to the brink with a caution almost ludicrous in such airy things. Thrust themselves upon the breeze with a shy little hop, at the next moment are securely on the wing. How the abundant sunlight inundates everything! The great clumps of grass and clover are embedded in it to the roots it flows in among their stalks, like water the lilapishes bask in eagerly the topmost leaves of the birches are burnished. The vessel sails by with plash and roar, and all the white spray along her side is sparkling with sunlight. Yet there is sorrow in the world, and it reached Petrarch even before Lara died, when it reached her. One exquisite sonnet, Avidian Terra, shows this to have been true. These sonnets are in Petrarch's earlier manner, but the death of Lara brought a change. Look at Yander Stooner coming down the bay straight toward us. She is hollow close to the wind, her jib is white in the sunlight, her larger cells are touched with the same snowy luster, and all the swelling canvas is rounded into such lines of beauty as scarcely anything else in the world, hardly even the perfect outlines of the human form can give. Now she comes up into the wind, and goes about with a strong flapping of her sails, smitting an ear at a half mile's distance, then she glides off on the other tack, showing a shattered side of her sails, until she reaches the distant zone of haze. So change the sonnets after Lara's death, growing shadowy as they recede, until the very last glaucia de chia parley seems to merge itself in the blue distance. Ed you provivo, what a pause is implied before these words with which the closing sister of this sonnet begins. The drawing of a long ray, the immeasurably long, like the vast interval of heartbeats which precedes Shakespeare's since Cleopatra died. I can think of no other passage in literature that has in it the same wide spaces of emotion. Another sonnet, Solis in El Melchor, which is still more retrospective, seems to me the most stately and concentrated in the whole volume. It is the sublimity of a despair not to be relieved by utterance. In a later strain, La Boma El Mio Pensier, he rises to that dream which is more than Earth's realities. It vindicates the emphatic reality and personality of Petrarch's love, after all, that when from these heights of vision he surveys and reserves his life's long dream. It becomes to him more and more definite, as well as more poetic, and is farther and farther from a merely vague sentimentalism. In his later sonnets, Laura grows more distinctly individual to us, her traits show themselves as more characteristic, her temperament more intelligible, her precise influence upon Petrarch clearer. What delicate accuracy of delineation is seen, for instance, in the sonnet Dalsa Jerez? In the sonnet Gly Angela Letty, visions multiply upon visions. Would that one could transfer into English the delicious way in which the sweet Italian rhymes recur and surround and seem to embrace each other, are woven and unwoven and interwoven, like the heavenly hosts that gathered around the era. Petrarch's odes and sonnets are but parts of one symphony, leading us through a passion strengthened by years and only purified by death until at last the graceful lay becomes an anthem and a an antimitis. In the closing sonnets Petrarch withdraws from the world, and they seem like voices from a cloister growing more and more solemn till the door is closed. 
This is one of the last decimus spesso. How true is its concluding line? Who can wonder that women prize beauty and are intoxicated by their own fascinations, when these fragile gifts are yet strong enough to outlast all the memories of statesmanship and war? Next to the immortality of genius is that which genius may confer upon the object of its love. Lyra, while she lived, was simply one of a hundred or a thousand beautiful and gracious alien women she had her loves and aversions, joys and griefs she cared dutifully for her household. And embroidered the veil which Petrarch loved her memory appeared as fleeting and unsubstantial as that of woven tissue. After five centuries we'd find that no armor of that Iron Age was so enduring. The kings whom she honored, the popes whom she rivered are dust, and their memories dust, but literature is still fragrant with her name. An impression which has endured so long is ineffaceable it is an earthly immortality. Time is the chariot of all ages to carry men away, and beauty cannot bribe this charioteer. Thus wrote Petrarch in his Latin essays, but his love had wealth that proved resistless, and for Lara the chariot stayed. <laughs> Lady Fiery Felicity, the Benni Arbi, she met Anna. Pensando, primer sol pagia chascolti su dalsa parole, adel bel pae del convestigius urbis chiede arbasile, averdi frenius urb. Amor sada palad by ol ombro cell, ov per cotal sol, chi vifa cus shui radialis superbio soiv contrada, o puro fium chi bagnal su bel viso gla acciceri. E prendi qualit adel vivalum quanta vin video gla ad awensi cari. Non fea in voice scoglio ome cheaper costume darter con la mia fama non imperi. O oh, joyous, blossoming, ever-blessed flowers! Amid which my pensive queen her footsteps set so plain, that holds her words for amulets and keeps her footsteps in their leafy bowers. O oh, trees, with earliest green of springtime hoars, and all springs pale and tender violets. O oh, grove, so dark the proud sun only lets his blither rays gild the outskirts of thee towers. O oh, pleasant countryside! O oh, limpid stream! That mirrors her sweet face, her eyes so clear, and at their living light canst catch the beam. I envy thee her presence pure and dear. There is no rock so senseless, but I deem it burns with passion that to mine is near. Quando amora bigle accia terra inchina i vage spurt in un suspera cogli con la su mani, a poi in vos glis sigli chera, so of angelica, divina senta far del mio cardol's rapina. A side intro canger pensiere vogli, che de co or fine dime me all times spodly. Sil seal silence to more my destina. Mal soon, she de dulces I sense liga, call grand deserted and do acerbita, lanima, all depart a presta raffrina. Cosa mi vivo, a cosi of all just spiegelo stame della veda cimidata, questa sola friend no e del seal sirena. When love doth those sweet eyes to earth incline, and weaves those wandering notes into a sigh with his own touch, and leads a minstrelsy clear voiced and pure, angelic and divine. He makes sweet havoc in this heart of mine, and to my thoughts brings transformation high, so that I say. My time has come to die, if fate so blessed to death for me design. But to my soul, thus steeped in joy, the sound brings such a wish to keep that present haven, it holds my spirit back to earth as well. And thus I live and thus is loosed and wound the thread of life which unto me was given by the soul siren who with us doth dwell. A arachiquil chumba and a crisp circundi movie, a simasa de loro soapment, a spargiquil dulsoro, a poi al recoglite and be not at all rim crisp. To stay negla achiandam rose vispi my pungin se chiumfin coil sento ploro visalindo circoil mio tesoro, cominimal chispeso domer and susptur mel par retrovar. Ed or macargo chimni sun lunch or my solivo, or cagio chirquil chibramo, or quil chiviro scorgo. Airfellis hobel vivo radio romanti. E tu, corona chera gorgo, she non paseo cangier teco vagio. Sweet air that circles round those radiant tresses and floatest, mangled with them, fold on fold, deliciously, and scatters that fine gold, then twinest it again, my heart's dear jesses. Thou lingerest on those eyes, whose beauty presses stings in my heart that all its life exhausts, till I go wandering round my treasure lost, like some scared creature whom the night distresses. I seem to find her now, and now perceive how far away she is, now rise, now fall, now what I wish, now what is true, believe. Oh, happy air! Since joys enrich thee all, rest thee, and thou, a stream too bright to grieve. Why can I not float with thee at thy call? Quul dana attend the glorious of ama di seno, di valor di cortesia, my refizo negla accia quella mia nemicaci mia dana el mondo chema. Come sequestonar, come dio sama, come jana wisa, come legera, eva simpera, 
Equal Dridavia de Girl Seal, Chile Espede Brahma. Eva el Parlor Chinola Stella Guglia, E el Beltasier, Equi Santa Custom Chindigno Menon Puspigar and Cart. Infinita Beleza, Chaltrua Beglia, Non Visimpera Chiqui Dosa Lumi Sequistin Perventura Non Perart. Doth any maiden seek the glorious fame of chastity of strength of courtesy? Gaze in the eyes of that sweet enemy whom all the world doth as my lady name. How honor grows, and pure devotions flame, how truth is joined with graceful dignity, there thou mayest learn, and what the path may be to that high heaven which doth her spirit claim. There learn that speech, beyond all put skill, and sacred silence, and those holy ways unutterable, untold by human heart. But the infinite beauty that all eyes doth fill this none can learn. Because its lovely rays are given by God's pure grace, and not by art. But pass I sparsi, o pentir vade pronti, o tenis memoria o fear or dur, o possent desire, o de bil cor, o achimi, achinangia me fonte o front, honor del famous fronti. O sole and signal gemino valor faticos aveda, o dulce error, to my fate or circa nu piege monta o bil viso, o vomarin simpose gly sprona el friend. Onu my punge evolve come a lupi, calcifer non valo, and I'm gentle item rose, suck in a hal mondu, vinute omar pal de her state of edercol il meal meal. O wandering steps! O vague and busy dreams! O changeless memory! O fierce desire! O passion strong! Heart weak with its own fire, O eyes of mine! Not eyes, but living streams of Lerobos, whose lovely garland seems the sole reward that glory's deeds require. O oh, haunted life! Delusion sweet and dire, that all my days from slothful rest redeems a beauteous face, where love has treasured well his weapon's spur, the sluggish heart to move at his least will nor can it find relief. O oh, souls of love and passion! If ye dwell yet on this earth, and ye great shades of love, Linger and see my passion and my grief. I vidi in terra angelus a costume celeste bellas all my new soul talk she die remember my jova dolce quenio myro par saga amar fumi. E vidi lagra marcu dio be lumi can fata mil vol in vidiel sola duty suspirin de der peril to ferian gar i monte stare fumi. Amor, send a valor, pite dogly a face in pain, and do un pew dolls kinds into dog nal trochi nil manuter si sogli ed or el seal al armonia si intento, china and savi di en rama mover fogli at tan adulces aviat pian near il ventu. I ants beheld on earth celestial graces and heavenly beauties scarce to mortals known, whose memory yields nor joy nor grief alone, but all things else in cloud and dream suffices. I saw how tears had left their weary traces within those eyes that once the sun outshone. I heard those lips in low and plaintive moan rather words to stir the mountains from their places. Love, wisdom, courage, tenderness, and truth made in their morning strands more high and dear than ever wove soft sounds for mortal ear. And he even seemed listening in such saddest ruth the very leaves upon the bough to soothe his such sweetness filled the blissful atmosphere. Glacia de chio parla si caldament, il bracci le mani, i pite al viso ci mave inside e mi stesso diviso fato singular dal altra gent lo crisp ci indor pero lucent. E il lampagur del angelico riso ci sol in bar in terra and paradiso poca pover son, ci nullicent. Ed io provido on my dog leo stegno, remesso senza lume ci me tantu, in gran fortuna in disarmata legno. Or sia quae final mio amoros of candesecae la vina del usado in degno, il acetera mia revolta in pianto. Those eyes, beneath which my passionate rapture rose, the arms, hands, feet, the beauty that er welcomed my own soul from its own self begil, and in a separate world of dreams and clothes. The hair's bright tresses, full of golden glows, and the soft lightning of the angelic smell that changed this earth to some celestial idol, are now but dust, poor dust, that nothing knows. And yet I live. Myself I grieve and scorn left dark without the light I loved in vain adrift in tempest on a bark forlorn dead is the source of all my amorous strain, dry is the channel of my thoughts outworn, and my sad heart can sound but notes of pain. Solizu nel mio cor star belle viva come all to dun in loco mil basso or son fatia per l'ultimo su passo, non per mortal ma morta et ella deva. Loma dogni subin spoglia de priva, amor della su losing udo casa de vran della pita romper un sasso ma non a cheller dul recontio scrivici pain in dentro, ovo nioracea sorda.
Sinan Lamia Kite and a dog laying on Rach Ultra Chisaspera and Olam Havanza. Veramet Sam Noi Palbret Ombra Veramet La Vogle Siki and Gorda Veramet Felis La Speranza. She ruled in beauty o'er this heart of mine, a noble lady in a humble home, and now her time for heavenly bliss has come, tis I am mortal proved, and she divine. The soul that all its blessings must resign, and love whose light no more on earth finds room might rend the rocks with pity for their doom, yet none their sorrows can in words enshrine. They weep within my heart no ears they find save mine alone, and I am crushed with care, and naught remains to me save mournful breath. Assuredly but dust and shade we are assuredly desirous mad, and blind assuredly its hope but ends in death. Leva my ill meo pensier in parto vera quella chio circo non retrovo in terra evi, frelor til terso searchio sera, la rividi piu bella in meno altera. Paraman my praise a dis in quest a spur a sere anchor meco, zal dizer non era i sun colich tai dai tantagera, a compi mea jernita in anzi sera. Meo ben non capen in teledium in sala espedu, equal chitanto a masti, a lagius or remazo, el mio bel velo. Da perch attacu a dollar go lamano. Chulsun a dedes i pedes a castic poco manco chianon remesa in salo. Dreams bore my fancy to that region where she dwells, whom here I seek, but cannot see. Amid those who in the loftiest haven be I looked on her, less haughty and more fair. She took my hand, she said. Within this sphere, if hope deceive not, thou shalt dwell with me, I've filled thy life with war's wild agony, mine own day close to evening could appear. My bliss no human thought can understand, I wait for thee alone, and that fair veil of beauty thou dost love shall yet retain. Why was she silent then? Why dropped my hand ere those delicious tones could quite avail to bid my mortal soul and heaven remain? Dulcidores plus I'd repulse pain de casto amor de pietate legadre stagni, tila my infame vogli temporo or mina cordo, in soul's gentle parlor. In quatero refuls con summa cortesia summa one state fire de virtu, fontana de beltate, John de basso pensier del cormavels de vinus scardo de farlum felis. Or fear in a friend or lament arted a quilt she just a side distice, or pressed to a comfort or may a frail veda quest to build very or feel a redis di mea salute, she altermen era ede. Gentle severity, repulses mild, full of chaste love and pity, sorrow and graceful rebukes that had the power to bring back to itself a heart by dreams beguiled a tenor voice, whose accents undefiled held sweet restraints, all duty honoring the bloom of virtue, purity's clear spring to cleanse away base thoughts and passions, while divinest eyes to make a lover's bliss. Whether to bridle in the wayward mindless its wild wanderings should the pathway miss, or else it grieves to sue thee, its wounds to bind the sweet completeness of thy life it is which saved my soul. No other peace I find. Gli angeli let I lend him beats it in dulcielo, il primo giorno ci met in a passo, lo fur interno pin de maraviglia di pete. Ci luce questa, a cool nova belte. De sin trello perch of a decide orna del mundo era in a quest alta sogjorn and un salame in tata questa etate. Ella contenta ever cangiato albergo, se paragona per quipi perfetti pardi orad or sa volge turgo miranu si ola sigio, e par chespet ando vogli pensier tota el siel ergo perchio lo du prigger perchie me freddi. The holy angels and the spirits blessed, celestial bands, upon the day cern when first my love went by in heavenly sheen, came thronging wondering at the gracious guest. What light is here, and what new beauty dressed? They said among themselves, For none has seen within this age arrive so fair a man from changing earth unto immortal rest. And she, contended with her newfound bliss, ranks with the perfect in that upper sphere, yet ever and anon looks back on this, to watch for me, as if for me she stayed. So strive my thoughts, lest that high haven I miss, I hear her call, and must not be delayed. Dismiss spesso il mio fedata speglio, l'anima stanco e la cangia da scores e la semeta mia distreza forza non tenesca under pay to see per viglio. Avidera natura in tato il meglio chicken tender con la il tamponis forza. Subito allor come a foco e morsa, dun lungo grave sono mai risviglio e veggio ben chil nostro viver vola, e cesar non si più più di una volta. E in mezzo al cor my son e in a parola di leci or dal su bel notus alta, men in sui giornal mandu fu si sola, chitat, si non ero, am I told her. Ah, oh, by my faithful mirror I am told, then by my mind I've worn, and altered brow my earthly powers impaired and weakened now. Deceive thyself no more, for thou art old. Who strives with nature's laws is overbold, and time to his commandment bids us bow. Like fire that waves have quenched, I calmly vow in life's long dream no more my sense to fold.
And while I think our swift existence flies, and none can live again Earth's brief career, then in my deepest heart the voice replies of one who now has left this mortal sphere, but walked alone through earthly destinies, and of all women is to fame most dear. Vego a jolet de chicantan duve, avar pain jinduil chu tempo pasado, but in dovela not il verno aledu, il didopo lispal i miss a gais, come i tu a gravas a fanise. Cosi se pesa il mio simbol stato of arresti in gremo a questa sconsolato a parter seco a dolorosa gay. I non sis la parter serian parici quella coita pangi force in vidhe, by chimi mort al seal santan to a vera molestagin a lover man gradita, call member di dolce in i digla mary. A parlor tickle can peed him in vite. Sweet wandering bird that's in just on thy way, or mournest yet the time forever past, watching that come in spring receding fast, days bliss behind thee and the seasons gay. If thou my griefs against thine own couldst we, thou couldst not guess how long my sorrows last, yet thou mightst hide thee from the wintry blast within my breast, and thus my pains allay. Yet may not all thy woes be named with mine, since she whom thou dost mourn may live, yet live, but death and haven still hold my spirit's bride. And all those long past days of sad decline with all the joys remembered years can give still bid me ask. Sweet bird, with me abide. La gole al sano elogios pium hanno del mondo ogni virtus spendita, and del corso su quis a smerit in nostra natura, vinta del costume edis i spento ogni benigno lum del ciel. Per chi sin for my amana vita, ci per cosa marabil sata de chivul far de licon in nas or fume. Quel vagteza di lero? Gold di Marto? Pavra nudave, Philosophia, dice la turba al vulga ignorantesa. Pucci compagni of rape per l'altra via tendite prigo pia gentil spurta, non lasar la magnanima tu empresa. Lust and dull slumber and the lazy horse of one night banished virtue from mankind. Hence have man's nature and his treacherous mind left their free course, and meshed in sin's soft bowers. The very light of heaven hath lost its powers, mid fading ways our loftiest dreams to find Mangir at him whose footsteps are inclined where Helican from dewy fountains showers. Who seeks the laurel? Who the marble twines? Wisdom, the ghost of beggar and unclad. So scoffs the crowd, intent on worthless gain. Few are the hearts that prize the put's lines, yet, friend, the more I hail they spirit glad. Let not the glory of thy purpose wane. Voice ascultate in rhyme sparsel sunity qui suspiri on the unit rival cor in sol mio primo divinal error quindera in part altrim to colche a son of delvarius style. In chio pano regino prelu vein sperenza il vandolor, of siace per prova intenda amor spur trovar pede, non ci perdono. Mab en vegi or, si come all popul to de favola fu gran tempo and servant di mimismo meca mi vergono del mio venegger vergogna il frodo, il pentersi. Il cano ser chairman ci coin a piece il mind do brave sonia. O ye who trace through scattered verse the sound of those long sighs wherewith I fit my heart amid youth's errors, when in greater part that man unlike this prison man was found. For the mixed strain which here I do compound of empty hopes and pains that mainly start, whatever soul hath truly felt love smart with pity and with pardon will abound. But now I see full well how long I earned all men's reproof, and oftentimes my soul lies crushed by its own grief, and it doth seem for such misdeed shame as the fruitage whole. And world repentance and the knowledge learn that worldly joy is still a short, short dream. 430 copies printed at the Riverside Press, Cambridge, in the month of September, Mxi. Number 426. Transcriber's note below is a list of printer errors that have been corrected in the Italian sonnets, by reference to the 1964 critical edition of El Canzoniere edited by Gianfranco Contini, available at Liber Liber, who? Liber Liber. The translator of this book probably used as his source an edition in which spelling and punctuation were somewhat modernized. These modernizations have not been altered in this book. Spacing of elisions, such as it has been normalized. The original book was printed almost entirely in italics, which are not marked as such in the text. Printer errors in the English portions of this book have been corrected without note. Sonnet line error correction I ten od and do do I fourteen chichi of thirteen chichi by four chichi by twelve size sci vi nine doggly a doglu vi nine chichi. The sonnets in this book correspond to the following numbers in Il Canzoniere. This book Il Canzoniere 1. 162 Lady Fire 2. 167 Quando Amor 3. 
227 Hara Chiquel Chiam 4, 261 Kual Dunna 10 5, 161 Apasis Sparsa 6, 156 Ividian Terra 7, 292 Gai Achai Dei Chia Parle 8, 294 Solizin Elmio Kor 9, 302 Lavomi Elmio Pensir 10, 351 Dulce Jerez 11, 346 Gai Angela Eleta 12, 361 Decima Spesa 13, 353 Vego Agilita 14, 7 La Gola El Sona 15, 1 Voich Ascoltate.